Thank you to Al Hyena for their generous donation on Patreon. If you would like to join them in their generosity, the link to my Patreon page is in the description. Oh shit! Now we're at the Market District, Sparrows Inn and Tavern. Market District, he's a hero. What the fuck? This is actually really cool. I like this. Meanwhile, across this, what the fuck was that? Meanwhile, across the city at an actual functioning tavern, a young badger, 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 badger slumped his way home with heavy shoulders and an even heavier heart. Hey! Hey! That's the, the middle one from the, the main screen! A badger. A badger? A badger. Okay. Sid Shrikewood? Wow, with the name's face was grim as he stumbled home to the tavern that his mother ran. Returning home empty-handed yet again. And this time he returned bright and early in the morning. The day had barely begun with cool morning dews settling on the wet grass below. As Sid approached the steps of Sparrow's Roost Inn and Tavern, his eyes lit up at the sight of a familiar face waiting for him. Hey, Patsy. How's business at the tavern going today? Hope the customers have been treating you well. Sid sighed and plopped down on a large stone next to his longtime friend. As for me, well, the morning just started and it's already a shit day. He buried his face in his hands. I kicked out of my scribe apprenticemanship. Apprenticeman? Appre apprenticeship? Apprenticeship. Third day on the job. That's gotta be a new record. Mom's gonna kill me at this rate. What am I supposed to tell her? I got a feeling he's talking to like a statue or something. Sid shook his head and grabbed a nearby broom lying next to the Sparrow's Roost Inn's entrance. He absentmindedly began sweeping the dirt and grime off the tavern steps. Rhythmic chores always helped him clear away dreadful thoughts. Me too. I'm like that too. The chores also helped relieve some extra work from his mother's already massive workload, which was always a plus. Sid's mother was always working, bustling about in the tavern and serving customers day and night. His heart lurched painfully in his chest when he returned home every night to see her slumped over a, a chair in exhaustion. Exhaustion. Sorry. Her hands had grown coarse with calluses, and she has complained of back pain as of late. Naturally, Sid often showed up to the, at the Sparrow's Roost Inn and Tavern to help out whenever he could. Usually because he got kicked out of yet another apprenticeship job. Sid sighed and paused his sweeping to look down at Betsy. She silently stared back at him, ever the good listener. Hey Betsy, this is like the fifth apprenticeship I got fired from. I really want to make mom happy and get a cushy job, but none of this feels right for me, you know? An amused chuckle left Sid's throat as he tried to imagine himself as a scribe. Me, cooped up in a cushy commoner job. I mean, I'm a commoner through and through. Well, I wonder which one he's supposed to be. We got the liar, the commoner. That means the Chosen One's the third one to be introduced? That's a little odd. Unless they're not really a Chosen One, but they're like, propped up as supposed to be something. I don't fucking know. Maybe they're all liars, commoners, and Chosen Ones. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I mean, I'm a commoner through and through, but I always dreamed of being something bigger, you know? Sid twirled his broom and practiced swings, slashing at the air enthusiastically as though it were a sword. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh fuck me! Please! His arms aren't finished. Again, work in progress. Now Sid the Adventurer! That rolls off the tongue way better! Going out into the world to perform heroic deeds, amassing glory, and saving the day like the champions in storybooks. What do you think, Betsy? It's a frog! 
Oh, I knew it was like a like an in, it wasn't an inanimate inanimate object. Obviously, Betsy's a fucking living being, a fucking frog, but it wasn't a person that's gonna respond. You know. Ribbit. Betsy, as usual, did not answer for the simple fact that she was a toad. After the good listener, she continued staring up at Sid with deep, understanding eyes as she perched on her usual basking rock. Right? I'd make a fantastic adventurer. Bards will sing of my legend one day, just you watch. Yaha! <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, he's pretending to be a swordsman. Sid swung his broom sword in the air with wild and brash sweeps. He's gonna hit somebody. He imagined fending off an invisible foe as he jabbed and thrusted his heroic weapon to and fro. Yeah, take that! Whoops! There he goes. His foot suddenly slipped on wet cobblestone and he tumbled forward with the grace of a damp log. As Sid tumbled, he lost his grip on his very heroic broom sword and yelped as it soared in the air. Right as the tavern doors creaked open. I knew it! Oh my god. Is is that... It's a bird! Sid, dear, are you... Oh, shit! Damn! You just whacked your mom in the face! Ouch! Sid's mother winced as a flying broom handle smacked her right between the eyes. Oh, no! Mom! Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to... He rushed to his mom's side as she gingerly rubbed her bruised forehead. Ilya, Ilya, Ilya. Is that a capital I, a lowercase L, a lowercase I, and a lowercase A? Ilya. Ilya looked up at her son with an exasperated yet fond smile as she pinched her his cheeks. It's quite all right, dear. Your mother's made of tougher stuff than this. Were you pretending to be a sword fighter with a broom again? Because the windows were open and the whole tavern could hear and see you. What they saw? <laughs> Sid's ears flattened against his head as he flushed pink. That was a private conversation. With your frog. Hila glanced down at Betsy doubtfully. Excuse you, Betsy's a noble toad and a good friend. Sid watched as his mother sighed deeply and buried her face in her hands. Looked like she was doing her best to keep a straight face and avoid chuckling. Or crying. Sid couldn't tell at this point. Oh, sweetheart. I heard your, um, conversation earlier. Were you fired from your apprenticeship again? Sid's shoulders slumped as he stared anywhere but his mother's prying eyes. Well, fired is a strong word. I prefer the term gently let go. Of course, dear. He felt a gentle wing on his arm. Sid glanced down. His mom looked so tiny in comparison. The scribe, the blacksmith, even the wood furnishers. You've been let go from practically every apprenticeship and apprenticeship job in the, in our neighborhood. Sweetheart, I may not be as charismatic as your frog friend here, but please don't be afraid to speak to me if something's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Well, kinda. Guilt started creeping through his chest. They've been through this conversation countless times. I just can't get into any of these ordinary jobs. The thought of getting stuck indoors as a scribe for the rest of my life feels miserable. I want to go out there and see the world. Don't you want your son to succeed as a great and glorious adventurer? That is a terrible thing to say to your mom. Why would you say it like that? I know I have it in me to be somebody instead of another commoner out in the mar out in the market district. Somebody great. You, it's a little pompous of you to say shit like that. Elia's grip on his arm tightened as worried trepidation filled her face. Oh, Sid, I know this is difficult, but the reason your father and I work ourselves to the bone day in and day out is because we hope to create a better future for you. 
We work so hard to, because we hope you don't have to. I want you to be happy as well, but many adventurers often don't return home. The thought of you going out into the world alone. Yulia snapped her beak shut, shivering. Aw, oh, Mom, don't worry. I'm the toughest cookie around. He's gonna team up with two idiots to be the three idiots. Oh my god, this is... Oh man. Oh man, I am so nervous for this group of fucking people. The many units already said that these people are gonna change the world in the beginning, so the tension is kind of undercut, but it's fine. Are you really never gonna let me be an adventurer? Ever? The Adventurer's Guild is just a short walk away from the Marauder's District. It's... It's so close I can practically taste it. I... Well... I suppose... Yes! Is that a yes? No. Helia sighed as Sid emotionally deflated like a trampled balloon. Oh, don't give me those sad puppy eyes. Your father and I had a long talk this morning, and we came to a decision. She took a deep breath. If you're going to go out doing wildly dangerous adventuring jobs, it will be a great comfort to your father and I if you had some trusted friends by your side. You mean the other two in the title screen? If you find a few dependable friends to form an adventuring party with... I suppose you can go talk to the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, he's gonna feel so confident at listing the son of the great Marrow Bonebreaker. Who's the liar. Oh man, the liar, the commoner. And I'm curious what this chosen one's gonna be like. Sid perked up and then immediately groaned. Bold of you to assume I have friends in general. People always laugh at me. Well, perhaps if you stop talking to your frog all the time. Betsy is a toad! Amelia sighed with a defeated smile and patted her son on the shoulder. This was impressive, considering she could barely read shit, even if we even went standing on her tiptoes. Alright, dear. Why don't you get out of here while the day is still young? Go mingle about the Marauder's District and see if you can make any friends. Oh, and before I forget, I packed you some snacks in case you get hungry later. Be sure to share them with your friends if you make any later today. Sid stood, stunned while his mother stuffed several wrapped sandwiches into his tiny pockets. Oh, wait, you're really giving me a chance? Thank you so much, Mom! I won't disappoint you! You never do. I love you, sweetheart. Sid is already prancing halfway down the street, practically vibrating with excitement. Love you too, Mom! Oh, and if you don't manage to find anyone for your adventuring party, your father's looking for an assistant at his cheese shop. And he's gone. Helia clasped her hands together and tried to ignore the anxious knot tugging at her chest. She looked down at Betsy, croaking happily on her rock. Oh, wise frog, what do you think? What are the chances my son comes back a wiser and more sensible young man? Helia sighed. I thought so. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it.